Now, for those who've ever searched around, if you look on the likes of Amazon and more, you are finding USB disks, like standard little flash drives like this, going for about 18 quid, and they are a terabyte, and there are bigger and smaller capacities out there. And despite the fact that the reviews themselves are saying huge amounts of negative stuff, people still seem to be buying them. Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to address the subject of USB backups. When it comes to a lot of NAS devices, USB backups are probably the most affordable and straightforward means with which to back up your NAS onto a portable drive for you to take home after work or vice versa to empty files onto your NAS if you don't want to use the network. Now, a number of you have messaged me over the last year or so about how What's the right USB drive to have? Generally, I recommend WD Passport or I recommend Seagate Backup Plus and all the other different variants of those backup drives. Because as good as some of these drives might be, to look at some of these other brand ones, you need to make sure the people building the drive inside know what they're doing. Now, one of the things that get sent to me a lot is people asking about these. Now, for those who have ever searched around, if you look on the likes of Amazon and more, you are finding USB disks, like standard little flash drives like this, going for about 18 quid, and they are a terabyte, and there are bigger and smaller capacities out there. And despite the fact that the reviews themselves are saying huge amounts of negative stuff, people still seem to be buying them. So what I wanted to do today is talk about these discs, why they're not as good, and moreover, figure out whether you can look at one of these as a viable way to back up your NAS off-site, or uh, well, I say off-site, onto a USB to carry along with you in a cost-effective solution. So, I'm using the DS2419 uh, that I've been using for other videos. And again, the price difference between this one TB is actually surprisingly small. This one here is 18 quid, and there's lots of ones at a very similar price point if we look at the Amazon listings there. But you can get a full on 1 TB portable hard drive with USB 3, so 5 gigabits per second, way faster than the USB 2 options available here. And that will cost you 39, so about twice as much give or take when you shop around at these different stores and these different outlets. Now, one of the first things you're going to encounter is to do with the fat. And before you ask, I'm not being derogatory about people's weight, it is to do with the concept of FAT32 and X-FAT. Now, this disc, I've ordered one, I've got it here on camera, and I can't see it, but I've got one of those USB sticks, the one that you saw on screen. It was the one that was ordered, it arrived a couple of days ago. And if we plug this USB drive into this NAS, this is what happens. Sorry, just had to lean out of camera, um, uh, of mic range, and I've installed that in the back of the device. And right now, it should take a second or so, as you can see, the USB disc has now uh, appeared. But of course, we can't see this disc. The reason we can't see it is because of X fact. Now, XVAT is a new kind of compression technique that allows flash disks to have more and more storage. Like QNAP, Synology as well, you need to have licensing in place to utilize these disks. Now again, I've never quite understood why, and I might even do a whole video just on the concept of XVAT anyway. But in order to utilize XVAT drives, you will need a license. And again, these licenses only apply to single devices. So, in order to utilize a cheap drive like this one in XFAT, you are going to struggle. But I can already hear what of a number of you are saying. What about FAT32? And you're absolutely right. It is not impossible. I'll remove this disk drive in a very unsafe fashion. And you're right, I should have disconnected it safely up here. But there are other ways in which you can format this to FAT32. So let's have a look and see about that method. Now, using this Windows platform, I recommend you head over to pendriveapps.com. They've got an app here. It's a little old, don't get me wrong, it looks a little dated, but to date, I've never found a better tool. There are other tools out there, and there are ones that involve using command line and other stuff like that, but this one has never let me down over the years. So what I'm gonna do is connect this USB now, this USB drive, because 
Windows PCs do not require XFAT, this drive has appeared. Straight away, we're only seeing 499 gigabytes. This was one of the first problems I found with one of these USB sticks. The fact that when the drive arrived, it didn't show the capacity that it was inside. Now maybe it was just poor shipping. Maybe because there's a 2TB version right there for 23 quid. Maybe it was the fact that they just got it mixed up in transit, but I don't think so. Because once you read the reviews, you find lots and lots of people who have used these disk drives and the capacity has not been viewed properly by the OS. But nevertheless, we'll press forward because we're not going to condemn them for that too much. Now, once you head over to Pendrive apps, download this app for free. It is a complete contained bootable application. There's no installation. It just runs as a portable app. And we get it to find our XFAT. There it is. And again, they're seeing 536 gigs. So again, still not great. And from here, we can start formatting our disk. So if we go to... Um, my computer here, uh, PC, there's E drive, that's showing 499, we'll carry on there, we'll still leave the name Sony, I because originally it was going to be used for something else, we'll leave that to be the allocation unit side, we won't play around with that too much, and again that will make a difference if you play with that, but we're not going to go too technical today, and it's having difficulty formatting this disk drive, and again that's because it's being used by another program of course, so if we Disconnect there, disconnect there. In theory, we should be ready to rock. Still thinks it's being used by something. Let's have a quick look, shall we? So we've started the formatting of this drive. Uh, we're going to carry on there. Apparently, just having any Windows Explorer folder that lists the drive in the side will stop that um, formatting taking place. And the formatting seems to be pretty quick here. We're formatting it over to FAT32. And we'll let that complete now. I think it's just going to verify and double check everything's gone smoothly on this drive. And once that's completed, we'll get this drive out of this machine and connect it back into the Synology. In theory, the Synology should see it. And when we've done that, we'll start a backup of the Synology NAS files onto this USB. And then we're going to track just how long it takes. Remember, this is a USB 2 drive, so we will get USB 2 speeds. But what we're looking at here is not only how long it takes, but how well it does it. Are there going to be problems? So it's done, it's formatted that disk to FAT32. If we go back into uh, the My PC area, the disk should be visible. We'll right click, we'll go to properties. And as we can see, the disk is now FAT32, still showing 499. Uh, gigabytes but again could have been a mix up on their part it's still terrible of them but nevertheless let's move forward and get this USB inside the NAS stay there disk removed and now we're going to move to the NAS we've installed the USB drive let's make our way over to the user interface here we'll give it a second for the Synology to pick up the drive and we'll see if this Synology can now interact with our USB stick. So have a look. It may ask us to format the disk. At the moment, I'll be pleased just to see the USB disk pop up. Okay, so we have an icon here. It's seeing the USB disk drive. We'll make our way over to the file station manager. Also, from there, we'll open up the storage manager itself. So we'll go for the storage manager. The USB share has appeared, so the USB disk has appeared now, which is moderately reassuring. Or minimize that and there is our USB disk with 499 gigabytes so next thing we want to do is do a USB backup if we go into the package center once again and install the USB backup um, application uh, we'll have to double check I'm pretty sure it's not installed but just in case let's go down to the bottom look up USB USB copy it was already installed so we'll open that app up it will find, well, I'll say what we want to back up. So we want to back up data from the disk station. We'll carry that over. We'll call this one USB 499. The source folders, we're going to go for the share folder, which right now that shared folder is a capacity of, 
let's have a look we're getting a calculated file size of all the data in that shared folder and right now we've got 221 gigabytes so there you go that's half the size of the supposed available capacity of this usb so we'll leave that there on the side we don't expect this copy to be very very quick indeed but we'll start the, the copy process of that folder we'll send it to the usb stick We'll click next we won't worry too much about the usb copy types we just want to have that 221 gig over we're not going to bother with rotation we're not going to go for triggering we literally just want this usb to carry on we don't want to reject the usb at the end because we want to be able to see what's going on let's carry on and again we've got a whole video on usb backups already but nevertheless we'll get this started we're going to go for every type of file and again i do recommend you check out my usb copy video and now we're going to run this USB backup so we have a beep from the NAS letting us know presumably that the backup has begun that's saying about the improper shutdown earlier on when we were doing a video regarding the StarTech card um, I do recommend you check that video out but for now let's change that and we can see right now it's 1335 on the 26th of June so for now we can let this continue its copy procedure just to see how long it takes. In fact, why not get the clock going? Let's get the alarm, let's get our stop clock going. Get the stop clock up and running. We'll reset the clock. Just leave that there don't worry we're not going to be hugely precise can you tell but for now we want to know when this usb backup is going to be done so once again the time right now is the it's about just after half past one on the 26th of june and we're transferring 224 gigabytes or uh, 221 gigabytes of data so let's fast forward to the completion of this usb copy so i'm back here on the screen now full disclosure this thing was taking a hell of a long time so after a few hours i knocked it on the head and decided to go home and come back the next day hoping that the usb would at least complete the task i'm sorry to tell you that the task ended in failure as you can see on the screen here we've got a big old fail we've left this running right now it's 9 30 a.m the following day um so you know even after all this time so what we're going to do is we're going to stop that clock and make our way into this to find out just how much actually got copied in this usb copy now remember this isn't about synology we've done lots of videos using synology usb copy and they've worked fine this is about cheap usb sticks so don't lose sight of the objective here now as we can see the process was a failure if we refresh the page we can have a look here because what we want to do now is we want to take a fresh look at the logs to see if anything has been recognized and of course make our way into that usb stick to see what happened now um, just because we've had one instance of this doesn't mean this is going to be the only way um, this is going to turn out perhaps if we did another test it might be different however i've already done tests with this usb stick in other synology uh, devices prior to this video when i was doing the run-up to this and this seemed to be a common recurring problem. Um, so if we make our way into this, first we'll go into that USB copy. On top of that, we'll make our way into the logs of this device. So we're going to the log center there. We can see that the failure is still on screen. And finally, we'll make sure we've got file station open. So from there, we can have a look at just how many files actually made it onto that USB stick. So if we remove that, we go there we can see that according to the logs that usb was uh the usb share that we did earlier has been created but there's been no instance there of it not working so if we remove the logs uh there and we make our way into the usb we can see that nothing was finished even that a primary file that it seemed to be taking absolutely forever on that was merely megabytes in size failed so what we're going to do now is we're going to run this test one last time just to show that this wasn't a one-off and again this is kind of what you're going to expect when you're buying these cheap usb sticks and definitely why you should opt 
for a standard USB external hard drive or at least a USB 3 recognized brand where it may cost a lot more but you will get decent results. So let's run this task once again onto that USB. You probably heard the beep there in the background and again what I'm going to do is just leave this device to run this backup. But while it's doing that, why don't we just just copy paste some data over? Because right now it's doing a backup of these files. So it might tax the system a bit, so we're not really going to this time judge this device by its speed this time. What we're going to do is we're just going to select a folder. So we're going to go for some of those files from uh, a previous video. We're going to use these test files and we're going to copy these over onto this USB. So if we click copy, and then going to make our way back to the USB drive. There's a timestamp for the copy that we're currently creating uh, from that USB stick. On top of that, I'm going to create a new folder and just call this test copy and paste or CNP. And we're just going to do a copy onto this USB. And once again, we aren't going to judge this by speed because we are conducting um, writing, <coughs> reading and writing, uh, reading from a hard drive and writing to a USB stick. So there are going to be difficulties in terms of speed uh, doing a, a simultaneous read-write onto these devices. But it's worth mentioning that it should still create something. And the fact that this thing is dying on its ass just to create a, a, you know, a folder is not a good sign, regardless of the fact that two operations are happening on the same USB stick at once. Um, once this is created, this folder, I'm going to copy that data that I just mentioned over, but right now this isn't looking promising. I'm going to leave the screen recording software here. It's still trying to do the same damn file from last time, and we're going to leave this for a few hours just to see what it does. The time now is 9.43 at on the 27th of June. Let's have a look and see what happens. Straight away, we are seeing problems immediately uh, trying to create that folder. And in fact, the Synology seems to have completely ejected the media of its own volition. Again, that's not physically done. This has happened of its own volition. I've not done anything here. And the USB copy task has been aborted, apparently. Although someone hasn't told this device here about it. So again, not exactly... Um, winning results here from this USB v stick and again I can't stress enough why you need to avoid USB sticks like this um, I could end the video here and I probably will seeing as the task has now failed and it's been cancelled even though I didn't cancel it the USB has now dropped connection which is pretty shoddy all said and done um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end things here and again do not take this video as a dig at Synology's USB backups. We've done lots of videos and it's absolutely fine with USB backups. The issue here is these cheap USB sticks that you guys are going for. And the whole purpose of this video is just to get you guys to understand that you need to avoid sticks like this for um, this kind of backup purpose. You might be saving some money, but you could be losing your data. And let's face it, that's where the real money is. But I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to do the same tests with a QNAP NAS. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.